Okay, so believe me or not, but this display, according to the Pimorny website, was first developed in 1970s, so it's quite old. Obviously, this one is probably a little bit newer, but still, it's pretty old technology. And I really like how it looks like. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to connect this to Arduino and show something that looks like a clock. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm displaying four digits on something that's supposed to be a two-digit display. So let's get started. And the first step is actually soldering the header pins to those boards. And for that, I will use the soldering iron from GVDA Technology, who is also a sponsor of today's video and was kind enough to provide it to me. So thank you, GVDA. This soldering iron is USB powered and depending on the power source, it can heat up as quickly as in eight seconds, I believe, but we will see. It has a nice looking OLED display and you can get quite a lot of accessories including the different tips as well as the soldering stand with adjustable clips. So enough talking, let's do some soldering. And one thing I like about the boards from Pimoroni is they offset the hose slightly in some zigzag pattern so if you insert the hair pins it will stay there even without soldering which makes of course soldering much easier. Here is an example of how fast it's heating up and it's like 2 minutes faster than my previous soldering iron so I cannot really complain. I actually like the soldering iron quite a lot and I would probably buy it anyway. And here are my soldering skills, which is something that I still need to work on. The Crust Zero is not actually connected to anything, but I'm still soldering it for the pins to hold better. And once this is done, I can connect it to Arduino. The chip is using the I2C connection, so I need to connect the SDA, which is serial data, and SCL, a serial clock, to the SDA and SCL pins on the Arduino. And on some of the boards, you can see that those pins are actually labeled. Those two pins are SCL and SDA, but I can as well use the pins A4 and A5, but in this case, I need to look at the documentation because they are not labeled properly on the board itself. I also need to connect the power which are the pins 3 to 5 volts and the ground. I'm using a prototype shield which includes a very small breadboard and you can very easily snap it to Arduino. It's also very cheap. I think it costs around one dollar. You can also use a standard breadboard but for me this one is much easier to manipulate with. If I look at the Pimoroni website, you can see that for this product, there is a code for Raspberry Pi, but not really for the Arduino. And if something like this happens, it's usually best to search for the library for Arduino for the used chip, which in this case is this one, is IS31FL3730. So I'll search for this chip library plus Arduino. And thankfully someone named JB Kim already created the library, so I will click the code and click the download the zip file. Once you have this downloaded, select Sketch, Include Library and select Add Zip Library. And in here, locate the zip file that you just downloaded and click the Open button. And you will see a very small message on the bottom of the window saying Library, Edit to your libraries. So if you open Sketch, Include Library, there should be this newly added library, which is this one, IS31 whatever, slash master. So if I click this one, it will be included in our Sketch. However, what I will do instead is open this example, which should be below the example, the IS uh, test.ino, and it looks something like this. If I look at the code, you can see we have definitions for M1 and M2, and it's because this board has two displays, so that's the way how you differentiate between the left one and the right one. And then we also have the M1 to M3, and that's because you can connect up to three different boards to the Arduino or any microcontroller with different addresses. And if I flip over the display, you can see there are this address 1 and address 2 sections, so by default, if you don't do anything, the address will be 61. If you cut this line, the address will be 62, and if you actually solder this, those two pins, the address will be 63. I'm not doing anything with this board, so the address will be the default 61. Then you can see that after we begin this connection, we clear the displays and inside the loop we are filling the matrix and clearing the matrix. So I think that even if this is driving all three displays at the same time, we can still use it even when we are only using one display. So let's just try to upload it on the Arduino and see what happens. Actually, before we do that, let's jump to the tools and make sure they have the right port selected and the right board selected. In my case, that's again Arduino Uno. And here it is running on the actual Arduino, so you can see that the individual dots, the individual pixels of those displays are lighting up one by one. So it works as expected. It's a little bit hard to capture with the camera what this display looks like in real life. In real life, it's just got a little bit more contrast to it. But it doesn't mean that it's sunlight readable. Once I put it down on the table, you will see that it's almost impossible to see the lit pixels. But it's still got this retro futuristic feel and I really like how it looks like. I've also noticed that if you put this intentionally out of focus, you will see the lit pixels much better. So let's move on and display some custom characters, some numbers on those displays. We will start by removing stuff from the current sketch that we don't really need. So we don't need displays M2 and N3 because we only have one display and we don't need to use any serial communication, we are not sending out anything. And again, we don't need to begin communication for display 2 and 3 and clear those displays. We probably do need this set lighting effects, although I'm not quite sure what that's really mean. And then inside the loop function, we have the fill matrix and clear matrix functions, which are custom functions defined down here. And we also don't need those, but we do need to update the display. So we'll copy this update function. And of course, we want to call it for our 
M1 display and we'll get rid of all the other stuff. So we'll only update the display, but don't need any cradle matrix or fill matrix function. So we end up with very small sketch with just few lines of code, but of course this is not drawing anything. And if I open the header file for the library, you can see we have a function called set pixel, which was used previously in the sketch, but we also have a function set column and set row and also set data, which sets the data for the entire pixel, which I think is the one that we will be using. So I will just copy this so we can see what's expected. So I'll put it in here in the comment section and then I will call it so for the display M1 I will call the function set data and it expects the matrix which will be either M1 or M2 and it expects some kind of data which is something that we don't really have at this point. However I think that we can use some kind of custom character generator for LCDs for example this one or perhaps this one. Something to keep in mind is that those custom characters for LCD displays are usually made of 5 by 8 pixels while our display is only 5 by 7 pixels so we cannot use the last line. So let me create some custom characters for example the arrow and maybe some smiley face like so and then we can copy those two lines of code into our sketch so I'll paste it for example in here and maybe rename this to image arrow and image smile and then of course use the data inside the set data function so the first one will be image arrow and for the second display which will be the m2 I will use the image smile let's try to upload it on the Arduino and see what happens also something I want to talk about we are using the array of bytes for our data but it expands the unsigned integer 8 which is also 8 bytes so I feel that we are safe here using the byte instead of uint 8 at least the Arduino wasn't complaining and here it is running on the Arduino. You will notice that the left display is displaying the smiley face, which is the M2, and the right display is displaying the arrow, which is M1, so it's something to keep in mind. I mean, I would expect the M1 to be the left one and M2 to be the right one, but you are free to change the definitions in here if you feel like that makes more sense. So we can display custom characters, but let's see if we can display two of the custom characters on the one display. And so for that, I will try to design numbers which only take half of the screen, and since we have seven pixels for the width of the screen, we will use three pixels for the width of one digit. Then there will be a one pixel gap and then there will be a second digit which will also be three pixels wide. At least that's the plan. So back in the custom character generator I will create a set of digits that only take up three rows. Unfortunately I can only create up to eight characters at the same time. So once I have eight digits I need to copy this into my sketch. Let's keep the same names for now so I'll copy it and paste it in here and I can continue with the other two digits and those will be digits nine and zero. Again, copy those into Arduino sketch and get some meaningful names. So this will be 09 and 00 and maybe instead of image, I will call this image digit. Now we want to combine two of those digits for one display. So it might be a good idea to create a helper array called image digit M1 and image digit M2 and fill those with all zeros. And those will be the two arrays that we will be always drawing to display. So let's just say I want to draw the image digit M1 and image digit M2. Obviously nothing would be drawn right now because again those are all zeros so no pixel is being lit. Let's fix it by creating a for loop inside the loop. And the loop will go over first three rows of the segment and let's just say for the image digit M1 of index Y. I want to use for example image digit 1. Again it will be index Y. So for the first few rows of the image digit M1, I will use the digit 1. And let's just copy this one more time, but this time we will go from 4, for line 4, until line 7. And this time we will use the digit 2, but of course since this is only stored in first three lines, for first three rows, I have to subtract 4 from this one. And I will do the same thing for the second display, except I will now of course type in M2, and I will for example show digits 3 and 4. So let's upload this to Arduino and see how it looks like. And we indeed see the digits 1 and 2 on the first display and 3 and 4 on the second display so this could be easily used for simulate clock using only two displays. Now as the last step I will show you how to change a digit based on the value from some integer variable so we can increment the digit and not show the static value all the time like we are doing right now. Also here is another preview using also the red display and I don't know if it's obvious but this one is not actually being soldered and it still holds tight and works as expected. And I cannot really say which I like more because I do like both colors. Anyway, back to our code. I do need some helper variables, so I need to know what will be the actual hour and minute value. So I will create a new integer values for hours and minutes, and I will populate it with some value. And I will also convert those integers into strings later on, so I need a character array, and I will call this hours string, and probably having up to five characters should be enough. And I will do the same thing for minutes, so I'll call this minutes string, again with maximum up to five characters. And I also want to some way of access those individual digits using the array, so I'll create a new helper array. I will 
I'll call it constant byte pointer and call this image digit array that will have 10 entries and of course the entries will be the image digit 00, zero going all the way to image digit 09 so I will populate it with those like so uh, let me tell you a game plan so we have the integer hours set for example to value of 7 and we want to convert this to a string so the array of characters called our string and we will use the function called sprintf because this function can have some useful parameters so we are converting the hours into the our string but this is the formatting string so the d stands for the decimal so this one is decimal and the percentage zero to means that we want to have some leading zeros so even when the number is 7 it will end up as a 0 7 which is great because then we can access those individual characters and we can get some index out of those and based on this index we will draw the corresponding image for that we need to first know the ascii value of the character 0 which is the decimal value of 48 so then we can say that the index for first digit will be the our string character 0 minus 48 and the second digit will be the index 1 minus 48 so let's do the same thing in our code so inside the loop i will use the sprintf function and into the our string I will convert the hours in teacher using the leading zeros. I will do the same thing for the minutes. And now we need to find out which digit we want to draw. So we were drawing the image digit 01. That's no longer case. We want to access the digit from the image digit array. And the index of this array will be based on the hour string. For this, we want to use the first digit or first character, but of course, minus 48 because the ASCII character for the digit show is 48. And we want to draw the line based on the index Y. Hope that makes at least a little bit of sense. We will reuse this part of code for the other places. So for the second digit, we will access the second character for, for the hour string. And of course, the index will be I minus 4. And we will use the very same thing in the second display, but instead of of accessing hours we will access minutes and we will do the same thing for the second digit so again instead of accessing hours we will access minutes let's try to hit the upload button and see what happens and we see 1030 because that was a predefined value when we were defining the variables so I think that we can say that it works as expected so the only last piece would be to make sure that the digits are actually changing and that will be very simple to do let's increment the minutes and if it's bigger than 60 then set it back to zero and let's do the same thing with hours except of course the maximum value is 12. Finally, let's add a little bit of delay so it's not that fast. And here it is running on the real Arduino. Obviously, it's not the real clock, but at this point, it shouldn't be that hard to connect the real time clock module and connect those two together to display the real time. Perhaps an idea for the next video? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, that's all for today's. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. I hope it was at least a little bit of a helpful video, and I really look forward to using those displays for my other projects. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, and bye.